This one keeps running from the rise of the sun to the center of the sea. His name is great. His name is wonderful. His story. Thank you, Jesus. And God will give you the praise. God will give you the glory. God will give you the honor. Come on, put those hands together. We worship you. We repeat our lips. This one will give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's already done, saints. Thank you, Jesus. It's already done. This one. Thank you, Jesus. We lift you up, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I decrease that you increase, oh God. Word my mouth to only say the things that you have me to say. Let our hearts be receptive unto your word, oh God. We give you glory in advance. We praise you in advance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, oh God. Thank you for your grace, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We're in Ezra, hallelujah, the third chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ezra, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's right behind 2 Chronicles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. We owe you, God. We owe you. We owe you, God. Right before you get to Nehemiah, Ezra, the third chapter, hallelujah, one through four. Thank you, Lord. And when the seventh month had come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Joshua, the son of Josedat, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetal, and his brethren, arose and built the altar of God of of the God of Israel to offer burnt offering on it as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Though fear had come upon them because of the people of those countries, they set the altar on its base and they offer burnt offering on it to the Lord. Both the morning and evening burnt offerings. They also kept the feast of the tabernacle as it is written and offered the daily burnt offerings and the number required by audience for each day. Go down to the seventh verse. They also gave money to the masons and the carpenters in the food and drink and oil to the people of Sidon and Tari to bring cedar logs from Laman to the sea to Joppa according to the, the permission which they had from the Cyrus king of Persia. Hallelujah. This Sunday, we're talking about restoring true worship back to God. Restoring true worship back to God. Restoring true worship back unto God. Hallelujah. Uh, we know that the children of Israel now have came out of captivity, and now they're on their way back. They have made it back to the promised land. Yes. What God had already said in his word, he told them after 70 years he was going to bring them back. So now they have made it back over to the promised land. Yes. But remember, the promised land, over in the promised land, the, the temple had been tore down, burned down, wasn't nothing there, wasn't nothing but rubbish. Oh, no. All of this had to be built back up. So when they returned back, it wasn't like that everything was already together. That everything that it was already built up, everything was already in place. No, when they went back, they seen that everything was tore down. Yes, yes. And that it had to be built back up again. It had to be restored back again. But they thought when they came back, everything was going to be together. And a lot of times, that's the way that we look at things. Just because we make this stuff, we feel like everything should fall in place. And it don't always happen like that. We have to put the work in. Oh, so when they begin to see all of this work that had to be done, say, now is our time. We got to restore true worship. Because first, we was just worshiping with our lips. You know, we were just saying some things. But now we got to really worship God. Because when you really worship God, you're really obedient unto God. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, so yes. they found out that their worship really, they weren't really worshiping God in true worship. They, they were worshiping God in disobedience of God can't bless that. Oh, yes. True worship. But he's calling back for true worship to be restored back. Now 
they're in the seventh month. This is around September, October. This is the seventh month, their seventh month in the Jewish calendar. And so as you see that fourth verse where they say they also, I'm going to go back up. They also kept the Feast of the Tabernacle as it is written and offered the daily burnt offerings in the number required by the ordinance for each day. They already, they put the Feast of the Tabernacle back in place because this is what God told them. God told them, remember the Feast of the Tabernacle. Remember when I brought you out of Egypt, when I, when I covered you and I protected you and I gave you shelter, even when you were in the wilderness, how, how I uh, protected you and sheltered you. The Feast of the Tabernacle is um, the Feast of Booth, where they say Booth are, where it's a pavilion looking like a tent, yes. where they will, this is like huts, where they will live in from the time of the Feast of the Tabernacle, yes. of knowing that God is their shelter. Yes. When they was in the wilderness for 40 years, God was their shelter. Oh, they yes. had a resting place. The Feast of the Tabernacle, this was a festival. This was a gathering. This was a sacrifice where they will go out and they will live in these booths. They will live in these little huts, these pavilions and so forth. And this, this is where they will be at. And this is how they will worship God and remembering how faithful God is. Amen. Oh, yes. And remembering how God gave them rest and how God protected them and how they really had a hiding place in God when they would get in these huts and live in it. So the Feast of the Tabernacle, he told them, he said, I want you all to do this every year. I want you to remember this. I want this to be a celebration, this to be a memorial where you will celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacle. Yes. Being thankful, honoring God, yes. knowing that God, you have been my shelter. Yes. You, you have been my provision. God, you have protected me. You have covered me. It's just like in your own house. When you go into your own house, you got protection. You covered from what's out on the outside. It's not on the inside. God got you covered. God, this is your this is the place where you really can be yourself. You really can let your hair down and be yourself in God. This is that secret place where you get along with God. And and and, and this is that hiding place where God, I know you my shelter. In this time of this pandemic, you know that God is a protector, that God cover and God has sheltered you. This is a feast of the tabernacle where Thanksgiving, where they begin to really thank God. God, thank you for bringing us out of Egypt. God, thank you for bringing us out of the weirdness. God, thank you uh, for letting water come out the rock and feeding us with quail and not letting our shoes and our clothes wear out. Thank you, Lord, for not letting the Egyptian God take us out. But God, we thank you for protection. We thank you to be able to have a resting place, a hiding place in you. A hiding place in you. They said, now we got to restore this. This got to be true worship. They said, now we putting the Feast of the Tabernacle back in place. Just like God told us, if, 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 if you want to see results from God, just do exactly what God tell you to do. That's all we have to do is do exactly what God told us to do. They was putting these things back in place because remember, at first, they was just disobeying God. They were doing their own thing. God already had things in place for them to do, but they decided to do their own thing. But they say, now it's time for us to put the feast of the tabernacle back in place. And I know that some people use that where they, 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 get, they use that for people to start giving them money. Come on now. Oh, yes. So you'll see that yeah, sometimes when you when you, you, you uh, turn on any religious program and, and it's around this time, they said this is a feast of tabernacle, you need to sow your feast of tabernacle seed, you know, and so forth like that. But it's more than that. Come on now. Because if you're going to keep, I feel like if you're going to keep part of it, but they said we're doing this in the spirit. Because we know that you ain't going to leave your house and go out there and build no huts. 
to live in. And, and God, thank you. God, thank you. You know, but you gotta, you can be in your own home. You can be in your own home and thanking God and knowing what God have done for you and where God have brought you from, giving God thanksgiving. God, I thank you for protecting me because I could have died in there, God. I thank you that I got a resting place in you, God, that I can hide in you, oh God. You are my hiding place. You are that secret place, oh God. And God, I thank you. I thank you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to magnify you. God, what you tell me to do, God, grace me to obey you. So, the Feast of Tabernacle is back in place. Back in place. God's Tabernacle. Say, God, we, we, we got to obey God now. Because this, this is restoring true worship. When you saying restoring true worship and you saying you his reverence. Oh yes. Oh yes. Bringing reverence back unto God. Come on now, explain it. Oh yes. Bringing reverence, the respect back to God. Oh, yes. Something is wrong. I remember when we used to be young, if you go by a church or anything, you 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 had such a reverence, even though you weren't serving him, but you wouldn't disrespect God's house. You wouldn't just throw stuff on the church ground and you wouldn't come on the church ground smoking or drinking. That that that's, that was a reverence, yeah. like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And you see somebody else do it, you be like, no, don't do that. Do you yeah. know where you at? That reverence have left. Oh, yes. And it's time to be restored. True, true worship. Back up to God. It's admiration for our devotion. That respect, that honoring God, that thanksgiving of God. I'm so thankful. I honor you. I bow down to you. It's more than just a song. Yes. Come on now. Oh, yes. It's more than saying we worship you. Come on now. I told you the first thing, if you're not obeying them, you're not having true worship with God. Come on now. You is not where if you're not obeying God, it's not true worship. It's not true worship. He said, those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In and truth. If you're not having a daily, I'm talking about continued relationship with God daily of you. You putting him first, then that's not true worship. Oh, yes. Come on now. Yes, Lord. You got to start your day off with God. Oh, yes. You got to pray intentionally. If you say, I'm worshiping God, oh, God, I'll put you first. Devotion. Oh, yes. That devotion. Oh, yes. Of God, I, I, I got to get to your word. God, I got to spend time with you. That's true worship. That's true worship. Oh, yes. It, it's not all about. See, sometimes people get hit just, oh, I, I went to church and I just worship God. But then you leave church and you don't obey God. Come on now. That wasn't true worship. That wasn't true worship. See, we have been deceived by some things of thinking that if we sing a slow worship song, that's, that's worshiping God. But if you don't honor God with your heart, you can say, I'm worshiping God with my lips. That's lip service. But your heart is far from God. Oh, yes. Good. When you worship God, you said, I'm bound down to you, God. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm honoring you with my whole heart, with my whole being. I belong to you, God. You can have your way in my life. Oh, yes. Worship. Word. To give worth to. Worthy. Oh, yes. You're worthy, God. Come on now. You're worthy, God, that I know who you are to me, that I don't, I don't put other things before God. I know that you are worthy. God, everything I have, it belongs to you anyway. You are the reason I have it. You are the reason I'm blessed. I owe it all to you. That's true worship. Where I can worship you, God, at any time. God, it don't matter because I know who I serve. I know who you are with me. To me. You begin to thank God. You begin to thank God for all the things that he have done that you are so thankful. When the Feast of Tabernacles, they begin to thank God because they were thankful. They were no longer in Egypt. Remember when God brought you out of what you was in? God brought us out. So when, when a person studied here, you saying, thank you, God, you remind them. You, you studied telling God, I, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that you brought me out of what I was in. I could have died in it. 
even when you're going through, in spite of, I still can put a praise on it. Oh, yeah. Because that's worship. I may be going through, but I still can open my mouth. I still, my heart of God is still belong to you. It belongs to you. Oh, so yeah. I still can put a praise on it. Worship is when you obey in God and then when you look around at his creation of what he has created and then still, God, I'm just so amazed about your creation. I'm so thankful for what you have created. Admiration. Worship is when I can love others when I know they hate me. True worship, when you obey in God, when you in God, when you can love others and you know they hate you. Oh yes, oh yes. And not only that, when you can love yourself. That's true worship. Because if, if you love yourself, you say, God, I'm so thankful how you made me. We're changing how we look and how God created us because we hate ourselves. Come on now. Oh, yes. And you telling God, God, you're not good enough. The way that you have created me, I'm not pleased in the way that you have created me, so let me change me. Come on now. Oh, yes. You have a lot of people doing it. God created. He created your eyebrows. Come on now. But now you cut those off and draw them back on. You tell the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. You, your eyelashes. God created your eyelashes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To protect your eyes. And now you destroy them and wear fake eyelashes. You saying, God, you you it, it, you didn't you didn't create me good enough. Good. Now you say, I, I gotta go get some cheek implants because God, I don't like the way you made my cheeks. Oh, so yeah. I gotta do something about it. I gotta change me. You telling God that see, do you ain't worshiping God for real because you telling God you didn't make me right. You worshiping the enemy and then you you trying to fit in with the world. You got to love yourself because that's who God created you. Now we want to change everything about us. Now some things we can change. But not to the point of you going in and God, God got your eyes the way he got them. He got your ears. All of that. Oh, yes. But we don't love ourselves enough or we don't love the creator enough till we start changing things. Good word. Now you got people, they want to go and get butt implants. God gave you that. You don't go and change what God created. It's a reason. All of us are created different, but we're created the way that God wanted us to be. Oh, yes. Good word. When you say you worship in God, that posture of the heart obeys God. Oh, yes. Out of the love for him, not of what I can get from him, but out of the love for him that I got to stay in that posture of obeying God. Oh, yes. Of giving him true worship. Amen. They was putting those things back in place. So now, here we go, the seventh month, and they began to gather together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Joshua, the son of Jehoshaphat, and his brother, and the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shittah, and his brother arose and built the altar of God of Israel. Oh, now, you have the priest, the man of God, and you got the government, Zerubbabel, coming together to build the altar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you see that? You need the church have to build the altar, and also we need the government oh, to yeah. build the altar unto God. Unto God. Not oh, to yeah. the devil, but unto God. Oh, yeah. So now here, they had enough sense to say, oh, we yeah. gotta come together. Oh, yeah. The government is upon God's shoulder. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. now, here we go, the priest and the government is coming together to build a altar unto God. Come on now. Oh, yes. oh, oh my God, don't don't we need that so bad? We need we need the president, Joe Biden, to build an altar unto God. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that he can know exactly what God want him to do. He can make the right decisions. My God. That things can change for America. And if the church come together and we really begin to worship God in spirit and truth, we will see results. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We will see things done. What things wouldn't be able to enter in America like it has? If we come together 
and we build the altar to God. Unto God. Unto God. But Zerubbabel and Joshua had enough sense. We got to come together. We need that altar. And let me explain to you about this altar. We need it in the church house. You need it in your house. Oh, yes. We need it in government, the White House, City Hall, court house. Oh, the yes. courthouse, oh, yes. police department. We need an altar unto, unto God, God. Oh, yes. because an altar is a slaughtering place. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Whew. It's a slaughtering place. Oh, yes. It's a, a place of sacrifice, a, a place where you kill what's trying to kill you. <laughs> a slaughtering place. When they will, when they will set up the altar, this was going to be a place of sacrifice. This was going to be the slaughtering place. So what the people would do, they will go out and they will kill the animal and they will bring the animal back in unto the, the priest. And the priest will begin to put that animal and bound that animal up and tie that animal on that altar and, and, and so forth until that animal is burnt completely up. The smoke, the, the, the fire will begin to burn that animal completely up. See, you need the fire of God to burn everything up in your life that's not like him so that you can be more like him. So they will have that animal on there and that fire will begin to hit that animal, that sacrifice, and the smoke will begin to go up to God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. See, when you pray, when you worship, when you praise, you want the smoke to go up unto God. Oh, yes. That altar. Oh, that yes. is the altar. Oh, yes. That's the reason why you will hear them say, grab the horns of the, the priest will grab the horns of the altar. Oh, yes. Land between. What is that scripture? Uh, the porch. The porch in the altar. Uh -huh. Grabbing the horns in the altar. Oh, yes. They will, because when they will put that animal on there, they will tie that animal up to the horns and so that that animal couldn't get off. So the more that that animal burned, it's still tied up oh, to yes. the horns of the altar. So what you give in God can't get off the altar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Whatever that's keeping you bound and whatever it is that you're holding on to, it cannot get up off the altar. When you bring it to the altar, you leave it on the altar. Oh, yes. You let that thing burn up unto God. God, I'm giving this unto you and I'm not picking I, I want to make sure that this thing is burnt with fire. Yes. Holy fire. Yes. Burnt completely up. Oh yes. That's I'm leaving it. Oh yes. At the altar. Oh yes. So you cannot get so familiar or, or think, oh, I'm come to the altar and I'm just gonna I'm gonna see what God gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna come to the altar because I need God. To do this for me. You ain't worshiping God. You're not trying to restore true worship. Oh, yes. You're trying to get something from God, but you don't want to give God what He's telling you to give Him. Oh, yes. You're not trying to bow down and give that thing that got you bowed down over unto God. Oh, yes. So that you can really bow down unto God. Oh, yes. But that altar was that slaughtering place. That God, I got to give this thing up. I want you to kill this thing so that this thing would no longer have me bound. Oh, yes. Good word. God, if you tell me to give it up, I'm giving it up. If you tell me to do it, it may hurt you sometimes, and you may feel it that I can't handle it. And, and it, it wasn't made for you to handle it. It was made for you to give it over unto God. Oh, he said, yes. cast oh, all your care upon me, for I care for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So it may be painful, but God, I, I, I want my worship to be for real. I want to restore true worship with you, God. I want to restore true worship back unto you, God. Build your altar. Oh, yes. You got to build your altar in your home. Your altar should only be at church. Oh, yes. You should have an altar in your house. And I'm talking about a hiding place. I'm talking about that place where you get before God. And God, I need you, God. I, I need you to just come in, God. Come in this place where I have built this altar. Sanctify this place. And God, kill everything that's in me that's not like you. Burn it up out of me, 
God. I'm giving it over unto you. See, God is waiting on you to give it over unto him. God is waiting on you to put that thing on the altar so that you can have true deliverance, that you can, you, you really, that thing will not have you weighed down and bowed down anymore because I have given it over unto God. That slaughter in place. Oh, yeah. Say, you know what? I I don't care. You say, well, I don't be at home that much, and I be at work. Make you an altar at work. Oh, yes. When you when you when you go in the rest, whatever it is, God God will meet you there. Oh yes. God, I'm giving this thing to you. I'm at this. I'm sanctifying this place right here. And God, I need you to come in. This is my altar today. Oh yes. A lot of times we wait till we come to church. Come on now. Oh, yes. Before we get to the altar. Oh yes. But you don't gotta wait till you get to the church before you get to the altar. Because it should be an altar already in your house. Oh, yes. We gotta restore true worship back unto God. Something that's missing. My God. They say, you know what? We gotta consecrate ourselves. We gotta be set apart. Now we really gotta live holy. We gotta prepare this place unto God so that God's hand can be up on it. God said God wasn't forcing them to do it. They already knew what they had came out of. And sometimes you need to think back, what did I come out of? What did God deliver me from? What, what did God bring me out? And, 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 and some people don't know what I came out of and what I did and all of that. But God know because God brought me out of it. So now I know that it wasn't nobody but God. So I owe him. I owe him my worship. I owe him the honor. A lot of times people now that in God's house, you know that it's not true worship because it's against God's word. Oh, yes. It, it, it's not honoring God. We come in God's house, we'll come in half naked and we'll jump up and down and we'll move around. We, we got all type of stuff going on in God's house. And God said, now it's time to restore true worship. In the midst of a pandemic, uh, he said, restore true worship back unto me where you will honor me and respect. You got cunning, you got, you got dishonest scales, you got all of this stuff that's going on and now all type of gimmicks and games and you don't have to do that when you got true worship and you got a relationship with God because all you got to do is obey him oh, yes. to reap the benefit, to reap the blessing. All you got to do is obey him. Oh yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's all you have to do. If, if we want things to change in America, we got to change. We, 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 we got to get to that altar and whatever God tells us. Some people are holding on to stuff that God told them to give up years ago. Come on now. And guess what? That have became their God. Because you're not willing to give that up for me. I made everything. Oh, yes. But you're not willing to give. You feel like you got comfort or that, that's bringing some type of peace or protection. And God said, I told you to give that up years ago and you still don't want to give it up. You don't have an altar. Oh, yes. You have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. You don't really know the God that you serve because if you give it up, then God know how to really fill you up. What you thought you need, you really didn't need. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Good word. Good word. Exodus 23 and 25. So, so you shall worship the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread in your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. God said, all you got to do is serve me. All you got to do is worship me. Worship is serving. Oh, yes. Good All word. you got to do is serve the Lord God. God will bless you. Everything you eat, everything you take, God said, I will bless it. And I will take all sickness away if we believe what's in this word. Good word. Good word. And a lot of times when you're going through, it ain't easy. But then when you still got to look to the hills from which come at your help, when you still got to say, you know what, I got to praise you in spite of what I'm going through. Because God is not about me anyway. I know what I owe you, God, and you have looked over me over the years, and I know I owe you a praise. I know I owe you true worship. If we really want to see the hand of God, my God. All we got to do is get back to true worship. And all we have to do is get back. I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to honor God. How are you going to honor a man more than you honor God? 
How are you going to honor a woman more than you honor God? Oh, yeah. How are you going to honor your job, your boss, more than you honor God? Speak the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, how in the world Come on now. don't you know that God is looking at that? Yes. They didn't create nothing for you. Yes, they gave you the job. But it was just God's favor being upon you. Do not honor people more than you honor God. Oh, yeah. Do not honor things more than you honor God. Oh, yeah. If you don't put some things before God, say, you know what, God, I'm sorry. Come on now. But I got to remove those things. I'm putting you back first. And that's, 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 that was their attitude. Saying, God, we put you back first. I see all the rubbish because sometimes people run, run away when they're going through stuff. And they see too much damage. They run away from it. But they seen the rubbish. They seen everything burned down. They seen all of this. But their mind was made up. And people, God, our mind have to be made up. God, I'm going to serve you. God, I need you to keep me and grace me to continue to go on so that I may worship you in spirit and truth. I want to put you first in every area of my life so that the blessings of God will continue to flow in my life. We got to put God first. You cannot serve God without worship. Come on now. You cannot serve God without worship. You say, well, how is that? Because you have looked at it one way of just saying it's a song. I'm worshiping God. No, 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 no. You cannot serve God without worship. What did I tell you worship is? Worship is honor. Obedience. Worship is obedience. Oh, yeah. You cannot serve God without obedience. Come on now. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You cannot serve God without obedience. You got to obey God. That's when they disobeyed God, that's what got them in captivity for 70 years. But when they start obeying God, now I got to put, I got we got to restore the house of God. We got to restore the things that has been torn down. You got to look at your life. God, I see some stuff that's been torn down. And God, it's time for me to restore it back unto you, God. I got to restore my life back unto you. I got some things out of place, God. Now it's time for me to put it back in place. And God, I'm building an altar in my house. Wherever you tell me to build it, wherever I need to get before you, if I have to sit in my vehicle, God, that's about to be my altar. Because I need you to burn everything out of me that's not like you, God. I need you to slaughter it up out of me, God. Because I know you to be a faithful God. And I know you're going to protect me. I know you're going to cover me. And whatever I need, God, I know that I already have, God. Because I got the faith to believe, God. That I'm I got to worship you. I got to magnify you, God. Yes, God, it's painful, but God, I still, I worship you, God. I magnify you. I honor you, God. I don't care how it look and how I feel, God. God, I got to honor you. It all belongs to you. You was the one that brought me out. You the one that covered me in my mother's womb. Oh, God, you the one, oh, God, that protected me in the Congress. You, you the one, God, protected me from the bullets, God. You are the one, God, and I know I owe you the praise. God. I'm setting up my altar, God. 
I'm setting my off to God. I'm setting it up for you, God. Hear my little shell. Oh, God. Hear my little shell. Oh, my little shell. See, that altar is that place where you give it up. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I know you've been trying to hold on to it. But that altar is that place where you give it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you've been carrying it. And sometimes you don't know what you're carrying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can feel that thing weighing you down. You can feel that thing stressing you out. You can feel that thing wearing you. Oh my God. You can feel that thing making you sad. But you say, you know what? I got to throw it on the altar. I got to give it up. I got to give it up. I got to give it up. It don't belong to me. I got to give that thing over to God. I don't know why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. But God, I give it to you, God. belong to me. I'm giving it up to you, God. Oh, yes. It don't belong to me. It don't belong to me. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 you, you gotta, you oh, yes. gotta, hey, oh, yes. it don't belong to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta give it to God. Oh, yes. It belong on the altar. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of the altar. It belong on the altar. Yes, they rejected you. Yes, they talked about you. Throw that thing on the altar. Say, you know what? I'm doing it on the altar. It don't belong to you. It don't belong to you. The enemy try to make you think that belongs to you. No, it don't belong to me. It belongs to God. I can't carry it. It don't belong to me. God already told me what to do. He said, cast it to me. He said, cast all of it to me. Throw it on the altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they got a song, put it all on the altar. That's what you got to do. Put it all on the altar. And leave it there. If you want true worship, you got to obey God and say, God, restore true worship. That I'm going to be like you. I'm going to walk like you. I'm going to be set apart. Holy God. Like no other God. In the name of Jesus. Because I'm throwing everything back to the altar. And I don't know what you got that needs to be thrown on the altar. But all you got to do is run to the altar. Run to the altar oh, yeah. this morning and throw it on the altar oh, yeah. and say, God, I give it to you. God, I give it to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care who know about it. I don't care who know about it. But God, I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. I've been carrying it too long. I give it to you, God. Hey, my little shot. I give it to you, God. Hey, my little shade. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my little seek a little shade. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my little shade. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, my little shade. You got to make sure that you bound it down to the altar. That you throw it all down to the altar and leave it on the altar. Don't pick it up when you leave out the door. You got to leave it on the altar. You got to leave 